um, iced coffee, flannels, tattoos, softball, certain jewelry like chains. I feel like soccer too sometimes, specifically played by women. Really any sport that's like more aggressive that's played by women, like rugby. Be less likely to be conservative. You know, not tight-fitting clothes. Van shoes or like Converse, but like specifically the embroidered Converse. Be less likely to be involved in a, a church body. Silver jewelry. Like kind of not super hyper-feminine colors. Rings. Um, friendship bracelets. Very mask. Anything really like subtly rainbow. They probably prefer um, musical theater. Cuffed pants. Layers. Remember when our dad or mom sat us down to talk about the birds and the bees? They mentioned something kind of cryptic about bees pollinating flowers and birds laying eggs. Or was it bees stinging birds and then the birds somehow having mutant babies with the bees? It doesn't really matter. The point is, sex. People do it. But in order to have sex, we have to understand sexuality and who we're attracted to. That's where things can get kind of tricky. You can be heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, pansexual, asexual, abrosexual, demisexual, finsexual, graysexual, the list goes on. With all these different labels, it can be hard for people to find exactly where they fit. So when I first came out, I was, I just kind of told my friends like, hey, like I know I'm not like 100% straight, but like I don't know what to label it yet. I kind of had to give myself a label just because I feel like that's a societal norm type thing to do. The acronym LGBTQ only covers around one third of all labels people can use to describe their sexual orientation and gender. This has sparked a debate outside and within the LGBTQ plus community around the usefulness of labels in general. As a professor teaching sociology and from a sociological perspective, I think that labels can be freeing and limiting at the exact same time. When you claim a label, you are able to then access the community that you probably have not had around you. People like you, people who understand you, your perspective, your life experiences, your challenges, uh, things of that nature. And I think that is invaluable. I think labels can be useful in the sense that when I tell people that I'm gay, they can understand um, how I at least generally identify. However, I don't think that labels should be used to box people in. I use it as like a general idea of like how I fit and how I kind of see myself. It can be limiting in that we are all limited by what others understand about those labels. With so many different opinions surrounding labels, a lot of people within the LGBTQ community have brought up the importance of looking at sexuality, gender, romantic attraction, and more on a spectrum. So the way sexuality kind of feels to me is it feels like it's on a spectrum of sexual attraction and romantic attraction. Personally, I feel sexual attraction towards both genders, um, as well as non-binary people. However, um, in terms of romantic attraction, I only feel romantically attracted towards um, women and non-binary people. And so I kind of use that label of lesbian as a convenience factor in my day-to-day -day life. Um, so I kind of hate labels. For many of us, you know, it can be complex, but I identify as bisexual um, because that seems to be the easiest for people to understand. It seems like, you know, Gen Z and younger millennials have grown up with more of an understanding that things really exist on a spectrum. Um, and so I'm really encouraged when I see Younger kids come to the Capitol and they're just like, this is who I am. This is who I am. This is how I present. It just is what it is. Although the spectrum is helpful, many people on the heterosexual end of the scale have trouble understanding it. This causes a lot of straight and LGBTQ plus people to put labels on themselves and others within the community that don't exactly describe their sexuality correctly or to its full extent. Going up to people and explaining my whole just my whole spectrum of attraction is 
a lot to do to someone I've never met before. And so lesbian is significantly more convenient. I do think that somewhat limits me in my identity in terms of who I may or may not have relationships with. If I were to ever fall in love with a woman, the fact that I label myself as gay is not gonna stop that from occurring. Your sexuality comes from like within and that isn't always super, that, that's not always binary. And so labels aren't perfect and I don't think it's for other people to put people into a label and into a box. I think though that language is important that being able to name who you are uh, and how you may differ is important. It's important not only to be identified as such, but to be able to then find your community, uh, to have pride in that community, to have pride in yourself, to be able to define yourself rather than allowing that to be done from the outside, which is often very harmful and negative. Back in high school, like, I was friends with a guy who everybody was like, oh, he's gay, but he doesn't know it yet. And it's kind of like, well, maybe he's not gay. It's like, why are we telling him who he has to be when he's not ready to come out if he is gay and maybe he's not even gay? And it's like this whole just bubble of like, why are we forcing our own opinions on other people? At the end of the day, you don't know someone's sexuality and just because you might think that they are queer doesn't mean you have any right to say that they are. And that's within the queer community and outside the queer community. I feel like nobody has a right to put a label on someone else's sexuality because it's not about them, it's about you. And it's about what you think and you feel and you believe. Does this make me look gay enough? Although being true to yourself is the ideal, many LGBTQ plus people feel pressure from outside and inside the queer community to conform to certain stereotypes. They feel pressure to prove their sexual identity to others and that their relationships are just as valuable and valid as heterosexual ones. I think the biggest stereotypes are like the femme versus mask, that you kind of need to fall into one of those categories. I've had it before where being the less feminine one in the relationship, I felt a push to almost go even more masculine than I would have ever gone like kind of on my own. Um, not necessarily, not from my partner and not really from me wanting to, but more from a position of like, I wanted to show to people that our relationship was just as valid as a heterosexual relationship. And I felt that me presenting more masculine and her presenting more feminine would make that relationship seem more valid. In an ideal world, I don't think we would need to have labels for our sexuality. We would be able to just get to know each other and get to know how we as humans experience sexual and romantic attraction and how that it's very different from person to person. I think that would be an amazing world. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's not the world we live in, and so we have these labels out of convenience. <laughs>